and then we can get this started. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining us for another Results Canada webinar. Um, this one, again, will be a member of parliament engagement, diving into a little bit more uh, details in regards to once you are in a meeting with a member of parliament, and also um, a portion of it will be about uh, social media engagement. My name is Melissa Dubé. I'm the Public Engagement Organizer at Results Canada. I have been with the organization for over a year now, um, and it's been uh, really great to have this series of webinars so that we can engage and learn uh, together. So I'm looking forward to tonight's webinar um, again. Clicking. Perfect. So some housekeeping before we get started. As you know, uh, the webinar will be in English and it should run um, no more than an hour. So we have about 50, 55 minutes left uh, by, uh, for the end of our webinar. Um, it is recorded, as I just mentioned, and the recording will be shared after, uh, so likely tomorrow, Friday. Uh, so if you want to take notes, please feel free to do so, but just know also that the recording of the webinar will be made available to you and via our website as well. Everyone is muted for the best experience possible for everyone, so please uh, hold your questions. Um, we will have a Q&A uh, period towards the end. Uh, if at any time, of course, you are having a um, sound issue or you are, something's not going right, please use the chat box um, and we will try our best to uh, support you uh, however way we can. So mute chat box, uh, you will also be able to raise your hand and as mentioned, there will be time for discussion. So uh, before we get started, of course, uh, a number of you are familiar with Results Canada, but I also uh, think that there are a few people who are unfamiliar uh, perhaps with uh, who Results Canada is. So I'll take just a few uh, seconds to uh, introduce uh, to you Results Canada. So we are a national grassroots advocacy organization and we believe in empowering engaged citizens to use their voices to influence the political will to end extreme poverty. We combine the voices of our grassroots advocates with strategic advocacy efforts to leverage resources for programs and improve policies that give people living in poverty the health, education, and opportunity they need to thrive. Whether it's through uh, writing letters to the editor, uh, taking it to social media, or engaging with members of parliament, our passionate volunteers succeed in having an impact in the world. Uh, so today, uh, we have the opportunity to expand our skills even more by exploring uh, further um, member of parliament engagement. We're very happy to have results volunteers and friends, as I've mentioned, uh, on the line. Thank you for joining us. Uh, while some of the examples will put emphasis on results work, um, you'll still be able to apply the tips to your own reality and work, and perhaps this might even inspire you uh, to join us and get involved with Results Canada. Uh, just pa before passing it over to my colleague Neha Berry, Parliamentary Officer, and my colleague Emma Hamilton-Clark, who is my Communications of Officer colleague as well, uh, we're going to watch two short uh, videos from members of Parliament as they had a message to share um, to us. Now, let's see, hopefully, technology is on my side. Hi, Aaron O'Toole, the Member of Parliament for Durham. How do you advocate to your Member of Parliament on an issue that you care about? Well, a post on Facebook or a tweet is not enough. If you want to be a serious advocate, send your MP some information and then ask for a meeting. Come to their constituency office, like here in Bowmanville or in Ottawa, and advocate in an informed way. I've seen this in action. Christine and Bob from my riding of Durham sent me information on Results Canada advocacy, and we met in Ottawa. We stay in touch, and I see their tweets. This way I know they're not just advocating, they're informed advocates. That's the best way. So face-to-face -face is still the best way to communicate, particularly in this world where social media is often not the best way for informed and respectful advocacy. So be passionate. Be informed, be respectful. I'm Aaron O'Toole, MP for Durham. I'm Anita Vanderbilt, Member of Parliament for Ottawa West Nepean. And I'm here today to encourage you to engage with your elected officials. Talk to your MP. Write to the people that are elected to make decisions for you because 
it matters. Some people think that as a member of parliament, it really doesn't make a difference what you write or say or put online. But the fact is, for me, there is nothing that influences me more than hearing from a constituent who is passionately advocating on something that they believe in. And it matters. So I would really like to hear from you. And I know that my parliamentary colleagues would like to hear from you whether or not you can get into the office in person. You can do it very easily online. You can send an email. And every single time that you do that, you are influencing how decisions are made. So please do write to me. Please to do get involved in online consultations because that is how I know what you're thinking. Thank you. Excellent. I hope uh, everyone was able to hear that fine. Great. So we wanted to show those two videos to kind of show you that there's a different perspective. And really when it comes to engaging with your member of parliament, it's about building relationships. So you will see that uh, perhaps your member of parliament uh, may be more interested in in-person and someone else may be interested in online or maybe they're interested in both. So really at the end of the day, uh, I think one of the key elements to remember is you need to build a relationship with your member of parliament. And certainly uh, this uh, webinar, uh, I hope will uh, help you uh, engage more and be comfortable doing so. Thanks, Shelly, for confirming the video worked well. <laughs> Appreciate that. Um, so, as you all should have received um, as per part of your um, subscription or registration to this webinar, you should have received an email with a link to a previous Member of Parliament engagement webinar that we did back in September 2018. So, hopefully you either uh, joined us uh, for that webinar live or you were able to uh, watch uh, the recording. But just in case to make sure that we're all on the same page, I wanted to do a really quick recap as far as how to get a meeting with a member of parliament because of course today we're going to focus on once you're in a meeting with uh, your member of parliament but what if you're not sure how to get that meeting so uh, by all means watch that webinar and reach out to any of us if you have any questions um, we'll be more than happy to help you through the process of getting a meeting so of course start with requesting an email uh, via email Introduce yourself as a constituent. Use your own voice as someone who lives in their writing, who is concerned by this topic. Don't overwhelm them uh, once you're in a meeting and also via email and use plain language. Um, members of parliament deal with a number of issues. So the, the easier you make it for them, uh, the more receptive they, they might be. Uh, make sure you have a strong ask and that you're clear what you're needing your member of parliament to do next. Take a photo, always take photos. Members of Parliament love uh, getting that uh, visibility and that's a great tool for you to thank them after, either via Twitter or Facebook, uh, to thank them for the great meeting that you had with them. Always follow up after the meeting. Uh, you might, you maybe you've promised more information or you want to follow up a few days after to make sure that they follow through with their, what they said that you would. Stay close to the Member of Parliament staff. Uh, they are the ones who, uh, who work closely with the Member of Parliament, so they certainly are great people to have a good relationship with as well. And engage with your Member of Parliament beyond meetings. So sometimes it'll be a meeting, sometimes it'll be an email, sometimes it'll be social media, as we'll see. So definitely be open to different ways of engaging with your Member of Parliament. Excellent. So uh, without further ado, I'm happy to pass it over now to my colleague Neha, who is our parliamentary officer, who will uh, walk us through the next few slides. And just so you all know, I'm the one with that who is clicking the slides. So if there is a little bit of delay, it's 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 my fault. <laughs> Go ahead, Neha. Thank you, Melissa, and thank you everyone for joining with us today. Um, we just thought it'd be a great way for us to kind of continue that earlier conversation we had a couple months ago about how to engage with your MP as we just went through. So this is kind of um, once you have managed to get your meeting, what kind of things you can expect from different MPs that I've experienced personally, but I also think that many of you may have your own stories about dealing with various members of parliament in your area over the years. As many of you know, um, a lot of our results volunteers have been with us for many years and often have worked with different political parties among all spectrums and certainly have met different uh, types of people and how they communicate and how best to communicate with all types. 
So um, we just kind of came up with some scenarios in which you might find yourself in when meeting with members of parliament. Um, I tried to make it as fun and engaging as possible, so hopefully we can get through a couple of these and give you some tips on how to overcome some of these challenges when you do meet with members of parliament that um, can often take on different types of personalities and have their own viewpoints on development in general. So next slide. Okay, so first we have our first MP, which I like to call the all over the place Allison. So this MP is often someone who agreed to meet with you, but seems to jump from topic to topic on um, that's not related to your ask. So they, they come in, they just came from a great event on, you know, in their riding, and they're like, wow, I, I met with this person and this happened and then, oh, and then my knees showed up and then, I have to email my cousin and then, oh, what are you, I love that blue scarf you're wearing and it's just all over the place, which certainly I've been through. Um, and so oftentimes you find that they're just so overwhelmed with whatever's going on or often distracted about what it is that we're trying to focus on or what the meeting is about. So it's really important to try to hone in again on why you're there and the importance of getting your information across. So some, some tips I think that would help when you're meeting with an MP that might be all over the place is to relate it back to something that they have done recently. So just even if they're going on a little bit of kind of early banter, you can say, oh yes, I actually, you know, recently saw you did a member statement in the house and, you know, you, you talk so greatly about things in your community. Speaking of, you know, I'm a person in your community and I do care about this issue. So just kind of linking it back to somehow, you know, why you're there and why it matters that they speak to you, they listen to what you have to say. Um, or you can even just simply say, sorry, I'm just careful of the time. I'm not sure how much time you have, but I just wanted to make sure we had a chance to talk about X, Y, and Z. So, you know, just try to curve around the fact that they might just have a lot of opinions on different things, but of course, relating it back to our original ask. So that's really important. The second MP I put in here is Denial Dennis. So this is an MP that listens to your concerns and refutes everything you say, no matter what. So you, you throw a point out there and they say, I don't think that's the case, or I've heard differently, or I don't know, like you can give them facts, you can give them all types of figures, and they just feel like, well, that's not what I think. I personally know this, or I know that. So it becomes very difficult, or uh, oftentimes people have told me that they get quite frustrated about how to deal with an MP that may feel like they know an issue better than you or don't quite listen to the things that you are talking about. So I think the first and most important thing is for us as advocates is to become educated on the issue, of course, to don't feel that if an MP questions or pushes you on on a fact that you don't know what you're talking about. Sometimes you do know more than the MP, especially with, you know, the amount of knowledge that all of you guys share together. It's really important that you also feel confident in the information that you're giving. And if for whatever reason you don't feel confident in what you're saying, you can always simply say, I will just confirm that this number is correct, but I'm very positive that it is. So it's okay to kind of nicely push back and just say that this is like off of, you know, showing your resources or where you got your factual information. Oftentimes we do source our things on our website as well that you can always look at and do further reading on. So that's really important. Um, and it's also important to know that you may not agree with your MP, but it's still important to engage. Sometimes you can just agree to disagree and that's fine too. You know, you can't, necessarily turn everyone, but building that relationship is certainly a first step in terms of how to turn your MP a little bit to the issues that we care about. So in continuously engaging with them just to keep them updated on things. They may not be, you know, the, the bright and shining star that we need them to be at that moment in Parliament, but certainly just educating them on the file and slowly building that relationship will certainly make them more interested in it. And maybe they hear something while they're in Ottawa and they bring it back to you in your next update with them and they say, well, actually, I heard some colleagues of mine talking about this issue and now I'm starting to understand, you know, what you were saying in September or whatever it is. There's always kind of ways in which you can link yourself. So don't give up, even if they don't necessarily agree with you right away. Certainly, it's someone that you can turn over time. And um, don't forget to just talk with us as a network. Results, like we all kind of come together. We all have different MPs we engage in. And maybe some of their caucus colleagues in the West don't, you know, they talk with the ones from the East. And it's a great way for you to connect with us all together and to reach out to myself or Melissa about who you're meeting with and giving that intel because that information is, is very vital. And maybe hearing about what some of their caucus colleagues are doing 
around that issue might inspire them to, to take issue on themselves. So I think that's really important. Next slide. So the next MP I have here is the yes, but actually no Yasmin. So this is an MP that says they support international development and believes in the principles, but actually does not take any action on moving the needle forward. Um, and so again, this is things that I personally experienced, but these are very interesting um, ways in which you can deal with an MP that might do that. Um, again, reach out to us. I think that sometimes there's political answers as to maybe why they're not acting on something like, if there's a bigger political issue that's kind of hovering over that might be taking up a lot of the time within the party that might cause them to necessarily not speak up on an issue right away. Um, so there might be something like that going around. Maybe there's other ambitions that they have that maybe doesn't make it ideal to talk about those things, but certainly having a political understanding of things is helpful. So certainly again, reach out to me. There might be just a specific reason why they're not taking action at that moment. Um, and that there's other political places at play. Plus, um, again, use the network that we have at Results, reach out to other grassroots members and our Google groups that we can kind of share with each other about different MPs we've met with and maybe if this is like something that's happening within that one particular caucus, whether it's a concern that they have that maybe other MPs are having and how we can kind of get around it. So it doesn't necessarily mean that they're not useful. This could be a way in which we can be more targeted and strategic about how we move things forward. So I think that's really important. The next MP is Partisan Pat. So Partisan Pat what talks about what their party has done in the past on international development and wants to know what other parties are not doing. This is to serve their own political agenda or, or incentive that they want to do to move themselves forward. Um, and I think as important as advocates is to not get caught up in the partisan issues. We are a nonpartisan organization. It's really important that we stay true to the issue that we're there to speak for. Of course, partisanship is part of politics. However, it's important to be aware of it, but not necessarily build our arguments around it. It's important that we can talk about party successes in general and, and highlight the work that they maybe have done in the past or are currently doing. But the main point is the issue, not so much on, on the spin or on the angle that whatever which party at the time takes. So that's really important. And it's important to also acknowledge that international development is, a, is not a partisan issue. Oftentimes political parties can make it that way, but it's important for us to remember that it's about the people that we want to help and support. And that's the most important reason why we're reaching out to them. Next slide. Next, we have Budget Buster Bill, and I don't mean Bill Morneau. We mean um, an MP that does not feel there is enough money in international development given all the needs in Canada, which we often hear a lot, and I know a lot of the grassroots have asked me about this type of MP, so I thought it was really important to mention it. When we're trying to figure out how to, how to compete with, with other priorities that governments or non-governments or current or upcoming governments, I guess, um, might have, that's important to talk about how we can risk relapsing on progress if we don't give this money. So it's not only just, it's not like the issues just stop until you give another amount of money. It's important to say that without continuous funds towards some of these issues, we're actually going back. So it's, it's not really worth the money that we're putting in right now. So it's important that we don't risk relapsing. And with no money, it's also showing that Canada is not taking its commitments to humanitarian causes seriously, and it does not align with Canadian values. So those are all really important points to mention to Budget Buster Bill, who may come up to you and say, listen, like, I do care about this. It's just, I just don't think I have the money right now, or the government does not have this money right now. These are some really good pointers you can say to him or her that can hopefully swing them in the right direction. And the next one is Specific Action Spencer. So this is an MP who's only interested in doing one type of action. So for example, like only member statements or only social media, or they want to only send a letter to the minister and, and doesn't necessarily want to take every single action that you possibly suggest to them, but may want to only be involved in certain aspects of what we do. And I think that that's fine. I think that those types of MPs are certainly important. It's not necessarily that we need every MP to take every single action we take. If they, for example, only want to do social media, then we can cater our strategy around that and maybe providing them with certain types of 
tweets or pre-made captions that they can put on Instagram that can also be helpful. As we know, advocacy is not just necessarily, you know, getting in front of the Prime Minister, although that is very helpful. It's about kind of these little wins that can eventually lead to some momentum or get some broader reach in terms of supports for whatever campaign we're focusing on. So I think that's also really great for us to think about. And just to think strategically about when to use them. Maybe we don't use a specific action Spencer every single month, but maybe every other month or maybe once every four months, we ask them to do like a member statement on whatever issue it is, if that's what their interest is. So asking also when you're meeting with your MP is what types of actions you like to do. Some, I know myself, um, some members have told me that they only prefer writing a letter and they certainly love hearing drafts from us and can tailor it to their own and that's fine. It's just figuring out what works for them and, and being able to be adjustable to, to them and help support them in the action they feel most comfortable in. Next slide. So I thought another part, and this was also part in um, our consultations with our grassroots members, that they really wanted to talk a little bit about some elevator pitches that we thought were kind of important and evergreen for our campaigns that we work on, um, or I guess our issues more than campaigns. So depending on what the campaign is at the time, we wanted to give you kind of a couple of bullets you can simply say that are evergreen within our files so that you can at the end do your call to action at the bottom should you ever feel the need to explain what it is we're working on. And I thought that this would be helpful for you. So we're just gonna go through a couple of them. So tuberculosis, right now we have a call to action to the Global Fund. I'm sure a lot of you are well aware and if you're not please look at our website and you can see a lot of our call to actions around that. But um, just in terms of a quick little debrief of what tuberculosis is and how it affects Results Canada and you as an advocate, we just came up with a couple of those bullets. So we have tuberculosis TB is an airborne infectious killer that kills more people each year than any other infectious disease. It targets the impoverished or, mar or marginalized, like those with insufficient food and housing, and occurs in both the Global South and places like Canada's North. Perhaps the most tragic thing about TB and the deaths it causes is that it's a cure that exists. And the only thing standing in the way of preventing TB deaths is a lack of political will. And then insert there the call to action of the day. So right now we have the Global Fund, it'd be great to then include that ask of the $1 billion. So again, no matter what the call to action is around tuberculosis, that's something that can always kind of stay the same, but at the end you can cater your call to action at the bottom to whatever the issue is. So then at the end you can say, you know, that being said, this is why we're asking for X amount of dollars for X issue and we look forward to seeing you recommit to that. So that's really important. Next slide. We have water sanitation and hygiene, better known as WASH. So here are just some very generic messaging you can say that can go to any call to action that may include um, WASH issues. So improving water sanitation and hygiene is critical to providing basic health services and preventing the spread of infectious diseases such as diarrhea. Globally, 844 million people don't have access to clean water and 2.3 billion do not have a decent toilet. Simple solutions such as proper hand washing and water access in hospitals and schools can reduce maternal and child deaths globally. However, the political will is needed to promote and fund water sanitation and hygiene. That being said, etc. So that's where you can insert whatever the issue of the day is that involves water sanitation and hygiene to help explain why the importance is just the framing of it that helps um, kind of keep it broad in perspective. Next slide. Child health, so we have every year, 6.6 .6 million children under the age of five die due to preventable illnesses and disease. Results Canada plays a leading role in ensuring that the government of Canada is committed to bringing the, this number to zero, especially in light of the current government's focus on the education, health, and rights of women and girls. Vaccines are some of the most cost-effective health interventions, effectively reducing the rates of infectious diseases, such as polio and measles. Financial support for multilateral organizations such as Gavi, the Vaccine Alliance, the Global Polio Eradication Initiative, and the Global Fund to Fight AIDS, Tuberculosis, and Malaria provide critical immunization programs. Governments need to step up and support these coordinated efforts to improve child health. That being said, this is why we're asking for X amount of dollars for whatever issue it is. So again, not necessarily you need to put every single piece in, but it just kind of gives, again, that broad framing for which you can then pitch um, 
whatever the campaign is of the day to help uh, you kind of set yourself up to meet with your MP on that. Next slide. We have nutrition. So nutrition is a key building block for health, serving as the foundation for strong individuals and societies. Malnutrition affects one in three people globally, including the 156 million children worldwide who are stented. Women and children are affected in particular. Investing in nutrition yields permanent benefits with at least $10 return on investment for every dollar spent. That's a big one. Only with the political will to support nutrition can progress be made on improving the lives of health and women and children. That's why today I'm sitting with you to talk about et cetera, et cetera. So again, just the broad framing, but that's a nutrition angle to it that I think was really important to mention as well. Next slide. So yeah, that's basically kind of a little bit of what I wanted to cover based on the grassroots comments on what we wanted to see in this webinar 2.0 for MP engagement. I did want to say before I left um, the Hill for many years, it was really interesting to see the shift over from kind of traditional ways of contacting your MP, such as, you know, um, as mentioned in the MP videos, is that, that meet, let's meet with your MP or sit with your MP. And it was a little bit later that the government and other opposing parties realized that it's really important for us to get involved on social media as that's where a lot of voters are. That's where, you know, different pockets of people exist. They have these conversations and this is something we just can't ignore. Door knocking is just not enough. So I think that's why we really wanted to focus a lot on how to um, use social media as an advocacy tool. I'm so thankful to have my colleague Emma here with me who is an expert in this file and certainly can speak to how we can engage with advocacy on social media as this is now where I know personally and firsthand have seen politicians actively being told to create accounts and to be um, listening to their constituents on social media as a main way to uh, to communicate with the broader public. So I think it's really important. Thank you so much. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Neha. That was really informative and really interesting. So as Neha mentioned, I will be going into um, social media just as another way to engage with your MP. We know that MPs are active on social media and we know that engaging with your MPs over social media does work. So if we look at uh, Canadians on social media, um, we can see that actually Canadians are quite active on online with 94% of Canadians active on at least one social media platform. We can see that Facebook is the most popular and um, it goes down from there. But um, today we'll be exploring why Twitter is a strategic tool to have in your advocacy toolbox. So, excellent. Why is Twitter the place to be? Well, because it's an instantaneous way to quickly spread information to a large audience. In fact, millions of people, um, just at the touch of your fingertips. Uh, so it's really become this place where news breaks, where Information is coming live from people at the scene. Media often go to Twitter to find out um, live updates about what's happening. And people who are following news will go to Twitter to see how a story is developing. Not only that, it's a place where announcements are often first made. If we look at the tweet to the right, uh, Justin Trudeau made an announcement on Twitter in 2018 as he tweeted to comedian Trevor Noah that he would be pledging 50 million to the Education Cannot Wait organization. So that's a, that's a pretty big announcement just to be pushing out on social media. Um, we're also seeing that it's a place where a lot of crowdfunding and support for different causes is happening. For instance, if you have a hashtag campaign, uh, for every hashtag, $1 will be donated to a campaign. We saw that just last month with the Immunization Week campaign. Uh, the B Bill and Melinda Gates ended up donating over $1 million to UNICEF. So really positive things can come out of engaging on Twitter. Um, and yeah, just lastly, it's a, it's a place where people can join in conversations with different people from across the world just by following a hashtag. And um, it's an accessible platform where there's no privacy and you can have direct access to anyone on the platform. So, 
Twitter has become truly a political playground. Uh, it's become a place where politicians and political players used to uh, share information and really build their community. Um, I think we've all seen with the US president that um, it's also become a, positive, a popular tool uh, among politicians. And within Canada, actually the hashtag Canadian Poli, uh, which is the hashtag often used to talk about Canadian politics, was the second most used hashtag in 2018. So that's pretty big. And then on top of that, um, Justin Trudeau's handle, and handle is just another word for username, um, was in the top five most mentioned people on Twitter by Canadians in 2018 as well. Um, among other popular hashtags were Trudeau, Forge here. So it is a really popular um, place for Canadians go to have um, political conversations. And some of the projected topics uh, for the upcoming election um, to be discussed on Twitter is immigration, migration, and energy. So something to keep your eye out for. So who should you talk to on Twitter? Well, we have the major party leaders from each party here. And you should also consider reaching out to different ministers such as Mary Monsef or Christopher Freeland. And of course, most importantly, your MP. Um, you could easily search for your member of parliament's Twitter handle. Just do a quick Google search, your member of parliament's name, Twitter, and it should be one of the first, um, first search results that comes up. So if you don't know how to, to find them, that's a really easy way to find them. And here is a, just a few tips on what works and you can use these just as a general practice. Um, doesn't necessarily have to be what only when you're engaging with your MP. So um, on Twitter, it's good to keep it short because it has a character count limit of 200, 280 characters. And that includes if you want to include a link. Um, it's also good to use the right hashtags. This is a really um, important tool to use um, as it's a way for people to discover your content. So it's good to jump on trending hashtags, um, and these usually come around World Notable Days, such as World TB Day or Women Deliver, which is coming up. Um, and something to keep in mind for the upcoming federal election is the official hashtag is hashtag Canada Votes 2019. So when you want to join in that conversation, just make sure you use that hashtag. And it's just, it's a really, a way for people to find your content and that way they're more likely to like it, retweet it, or reply to your post. Another um, tip to remember is to use an image. Uh, people are visual creatures by nature, so visuals are just an easy way to digest the information as well as it's easier to remember. And actually tweets with images get on average 35% increase in retweets, so it's in the numbers. Um, and then lastly, it's important to tag people. So by tagging someone in your post, it will notify them, it'll send them a notification, and um, it'll increase the chances of them actually seeing your post and then being your post being shared. Um, so with that said, you should always tag Results Canada and our tag, which I'll share to you at the end of um, my little blurb, um, is at Results CDA, but that way we can quickly see and share your post. So what can you share and how can you engage with your MP? What kind of content should you be sharing with them? Well, your letters to the editor, you've been published. So why not spread the message even further and have it be seen by more people and more importantly, your MP. So take a screenshot of your letter to the editor, share the link to the online article, tag your MP, of course, tag Results Canada, and really anyone else you wanna see it. Secondly, you can share your meetings with your MP. So you've met with your MP and what a great way to thank them for the meeting and reinforce what you've discussed in your meeting than with a tweet. MPs love being recognized on social media for the work that they're doing and will most likely retweet uh, your post. So as we can see, uh, Sherry Moran's uh, post on the right, where she had a meeting with another grassroots member, with her MP, Andrew Leslie, about the Global Fund. So what an awesome post. And I am fairly certain that he did retweet it. 
Um, another thing you can do is tweet directly at your MP. Let them know an issue that, about an issue that matters to you. Um, and it does really work. If we look at the tweet at the bottom left of the page, uh, we have Angela Quinlan reached out directly to her MP, Karen McCrinnan, about the Global Fund. And what did she re reply? I'll pass that on to Minister Monsef. Thank you for caring. Amazing. I can't, when I saw this, it made my day. Um, so we, we know that it does work. Um, you can share your monthly actions. We often share digital toolkits in our call to action. So please use those resources. They're there to help you share your message, spread, spread the word. Um, you can also share personal or related news articles that may su support a campaign. And don't be shy to, to amplify others, retweet, like, share. Um, it really does help show support and spread the message. And lastly, just a reminder to share positive messages. While it's good to hold decision makers accountable, it's also really important to highlight the positive work being done. So don't forget to, to spread the positivity. So that kind of wraps up a bit about Twitter. And I do want to touch on Facebook and Instagram as MPs are very active on those two platforms as well. So uh, Facebook is widely used by MPs and you can easily um, tag them in your posts just the same way you would with Twitter. You can search their uh, Facebook account just as you would through a Google search. You feel free to also tag Results Canada so that we can ampl amplify your post. And what works on Facebook? Blog posts, videos, links to interesting articles, and you can also uh, share your letters to the editor on Facebook as well. Instagram is becoming increasingly more popular with MPs and politicians. We're really seeing that trend lately. Um, they're using a feature called Instagram Stories, which if you can see the screenshot to the left, I took that of Catherine McKenna's uh, Instagram story yesterday or the day before about a little sneak peek at behind the scenes with her interview with AFP. So it really just gives a glimpse into a day uh, in their life, which is really interesting if, if you care to know more about what it's like to be an MP or what they do on the day to day. Um, I would would highly recommend checking out Instagram, make an account and follow them. So lastly, um, I also encourage you to follow other organizations that may be of interest to you like the Global Fund or Women Deliver. They're all very active on social media. So go ahead, add them, follow, tag. You can also tag them in your post and uh, like and share their content. So with that, I will share our um, Results Canada handles. So they're all fairly similar. Twitter at Results CDA, same for Instagram, and Facebook at Results.Canada. So I encourage you to sign up today if you aren't online. Don't be discouraged if it seems daunting to you. I can let you know that our executive director, Chris Dendies, was on she wasn't even on Twitter one year ago, and she already has more followers than people she follows. So if Chris can do it, we all can do it. And um, it's just a really instant, easy, instantaneous way to be part of the conversation. And best of all, you can really do it anytime, anywhere, just at the touch of your fingertips. You can be in your pajamas if you want. It's, it's really that easy. Um, and if you aren't sure how to follow us, you can easily go to our website and find our social media icons on the top right corner of the web page. So thanks so much. I really look forward to seeing and chatting with you all on social. That's great. Thank you so much, Emma. I'm hoping you can all hear me. Um, so that was really good, Neha. Uh, Emma, thank you so much for sharing uh, all of those tips and tricks. Can I get a thumbs up from someone? Maybe just because it, my computer is telling me that my microphone is not working. It's working fine. Excellent, yeah, thank you, you Angela. <laughs> <laughs> always get a little bit worried when I get a notification that says not working or not detected. So thank you for confirming. So 
I actually, uh, as a segue, I'm um, thinking about uh, what Emma and Neha shared about Member of Parliament engagement. I have a, a, a small success story. Um, so I have been tweeting at my Member of Parliament for months, literally since I've been, at least since I've been working with Results Canada, I had been tweeting at him. Uh, just so that he would know that I am a constituent who cares about uh, the fact that uh, TB is a top infectious killer and that uh, Canada needs to do something. I've tweeted at him on education, on Google Health. And um, so about a month ago, I went for my very first member of parliament meeting. And as soon as I said my name, he said, you're my Twitter friend. So that to me was amazing because not only was I meeting him officially for the first time, but he recognized my name without me having to say anything from Twitter. So that also told me that he was listening, he was monitoring whether that was him or his staff, but I'm, I'm thinking it was him. So just know that even though they may not answer, uh, they are probably um, monitoring and paying attention to what is going on online as well. So uh, it shows to you the power of Twitter because not only did that kind of put me at ease uh, at the beginning of the meeting, I was a little bit stressed, of course, nervous to make sure that I wouldn't say anything uh, out of place, but uh, that made me feel good about the work that I had been doing for the previous months um, on that. And one thing also I wanted to mention is um, it's you can certainly reach more people on Twitter than the number of followers you have. I've had, I have about 240 followers, but I've had posts that had more than 2000 uh, social media impressions. So it's not necessarily just about the numbers. If you use the right hashtags, if you use photos, you can certainly uh, have a wider uh, social media impression reach uh, than, than just your followers, if I may say so. So time to take action. Uh, so we have some suggested uh, actions for you to take and then we will open it up for discussion. So, of course, join Twitter and time to engage with your member of parliament. If you're already on Twitter, keep at it. I know from the list of participants, I definitely recognize uh, a number of names and Angela, notably, uh, we gave you as an example. So great to have you on the call tonight. Uh, talk to three friends about joining results and the impact that we all have together. Uh, Results Canada is a big family and um, um, we support each other and uh, so that we have, uh, so that we put our voices together, we combine our voices together to have a, a broader impact for the world. Email your member of parliament to introduce yourself if you have never done that. Uh, and it's a good time also to ask for their support on our current call to action. No matter what the action is, there's all, it's never too late to introduce yourself write a letter to the editor that is also on our current call to action. Uh, for any details uh, about our current call to action or any resources, we have a number on our website. So if you go to results resultaca it's at the bottom of the screen here. Uh, there's certainly a number of uh, tools and resources. And by all means, at any time, uh, you can reach out to me. You should all have my email uh, and it'll be also shared at the end of this presentation. But um, more than happy to support you however way we can. So now we're opening it up for question. Um, so we had recommended to all of you when you were registering for the webinar to share any questions or comments that you had beforehand. So I'm happy to start us off with uh, two questions we've received and then that will give you uh, certainly time to think about a question. Uh, you can start typing in the chat box uh, you can also raise your hand and we'll make sure that you have a chance to ask your question. So I believe this first question would be uh, for Neha. Uh, so the question reads as following. Do you have suggestions specific to meeting with NDP members of parliament? Do you suggest a different approach when meeting with representatives who are often or usually in agreement with your asks, but who have such limited influence in government decisions? Yeah, so I've had the experience of working both as third party opposition and government side of it. So I personally always found in opposition, whether it be third party or official opposition, 
it's probably the most fun. And in terms of being able to advocate on behalf of your constituents, I find it a little bit easier um, for the MP because they aren't necessarily having to toe the government line and they're able to kind of just say what they feel and, and throw it to the government for a response. They're essentially just raising the issues that the government needs to respond to. So I think working with, if you're talking about specific with the NDP, um, I think there's certainly definitely ways we can engage with them. Um, whether that be like a question in the order paper, which we often do if they want to do a question and question period that can ask the government where they stand on a particular campaign we're working on or if they're going to commit to X amount of dollars on an issue. Um, that's certainly a way we can engage social media again, they can take to, to that just speaking on what Emma was just discussing um, how we can do uh, different ways of engaging with them. And again, I think like when you're in opposition, it's a little bit easier, if anything, to be able to um, to advocate on behalf of constituents, again, because they're able to, to just throw it to the government to say, what are you doing on this? Or why haven't you done enough on this? Or we could be doing more on that. So I think that's certainly something that they can do. And also we have a global health caucus, which I think members of parliament um, also participated and talked with each other about how to move things internally and how to meet with the minister or the prime minister's office and how to engage in, um, in issues that involve around development and how we can move things forward on that as well. So they're encouraging them to, to uh, participate in that, in that type of um, formal setting in parliament. Great, thank you so much Neha. Um, we had received another question and then we'll move on to the chat box. Uh, so the question is, can results become involved with uniting informal activists and local community groups into a wide common front for the 17 sustainable development goals for 2030? I think I can take that uh, question. So it's a really good question actually. And uh, of course the work that Results Canada does, um, it does we, our work does fall under the sustainable development goals. And uh, of course, as you know, we believe that there are solutions and enough resources to eliminate poverty and it's a matter of uh, getting the political will. So by working on the themes of global health and education, uh, which are of course part of the SDGs, we have a positive impact for the people living in poverty. So our work focuses on about eight of the 17 SDGs, so no poverty, quality, education, uh, good health and well-being, gender equality, etc. Um, so what, we certainly invite people to join Results Canada as we have uh, folks taking actions as part of a group or also on their own. It's whatever works with you and it can vary from one month to the other. Uh, so we provide a network with resources, support, expertise, etc. And uh, of course, we believe in combining voices so to have a greater impact together. So I hope uh, that, answer your, that answers your question. So by all means, if you want to follow up to uh, any of the questions or answers we've given, uh, feel free to do that. So we've received uh, two questions in the chat box. So there's part one, and then there's a second uh, part. There, there's another part that has been added to the first question. So I'll read the first question, and then we can move on to the second, which is linked to uh, the first one, as I said already twice. <laughs> um, so Angela is asking, please could you expand on asking an, a member of parliament to prepare a member member's statement? Is this delivered in the House of Commons? Yeah, so great question. Um, so member statement is something that's done usually between 2 to 2 15 p.m. in the afternoon and it provides a member of parliament um, about, I don't know, I want to say 30 seconds or something like that. Yeah, one minute, sorry. Um, to talk about an issue that's important to them. Some do something on their writing, some want to talk about a, a global issue they're talking about. And so they can speak to that in front of the House, in front of all the members of Parliament that are around and address an issue. So what we often do is, let's say for World TB Day, and this is all online as well, you can look on our website. We have a bunch of member statements done by various members of Parliament around some of these issues. Um, and talk about the importance of why this day matters for World TB Day. We did World Immunization Week. We've done a couple of big moments that we've had. World Breastfeeding Day, I think we also did. So there's been a lot of movement on that. So asking a member of parliament to say, hey, if there's a member statement you wish to do, we'd love to have you do it on World Toilet Day or whatever the issue it is. Oftentimes we do outline what we would like to see in our call to action. But if your member of parliament, like I said, has specifically said, they would love to do a member statement. Some of them offer to do it already, especially if you're a constituent of theirs, they may want to highlight that. 
then we certainly can take take them up on that offer. We can also offer to help them write it. We can give them some talking points for they can write it. So again, it's a really great way that we can kind of broaden our reach. <laughs> And we can also tweet it out and use our social media tactics that we just learned. And also, I know that MPs are also encouraging their colleagues to retweet their own messaging. So it's not just MPs talking about themselves. They're, I know that they're being told to also amplify their colleagues as well. So oftentimes, if even if you're a member of parliament, did a member statement, chances are their colleagues will also be retweeting and posting it as well. So I think that's really important to mention. That's a great question, though. Excellent. Thank you so much. And then to follow up and build upon that question, uh, can you elaborate on some of the options for actions we can ask or suggest uh, MPs to take? Do you want to talk about social media? Yeah. Um, I think that, um, are you, is the question referring to in a meeting or... I think um, the way I'm reading it, and Shali, by any means, uh, feel free to clarify. Uh, but I think uh, what she's asking is, oh, you, oh, you can speak. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> if it's, oh, sorry, oh. Shali is saying that she can clarify. She means if we have a meeting, what can we ask them to do? So once you're, you know, we talked about it, elevator pitch and uh, the call to action. So what are some of the examples of actions that we might suggest uh, or ask um, members of parliament um, to, to do? And um, she's asking on social media or wherever else as well. So maybe on social media and then okay. maybe after that uh, for Neha as well. Yeah, okay, thank you for clarifying that, Shelly. Um, so on social media, it could just be if we're asking them to support a certain cause, it could be a public, I support this, this issue matters to me, and they could make a post on social media about it. Um, that could be one action for, for you to ask your MP to do. Um, if it's more specific, to say the global fund, which we just did, and we had an ask, which maybe Neha wants to elaborate on. Yeah, so there's different ways, and again, it depends on your MP, and maybe if they hold a certain particular, if they're on a committee, that's interesting for us, or if they're a parliamentary secretary or whatever it is, there's different ways. So for example, we just did one where we had MPs and senators sign on to a letter that was asking for an increase to the global fund, and so we petitioned that around to various members of parliament as well as senators who signed on to show their support. So that was one advocacy tool that we used. We also can do, as I mentioned earlier, member statements. We can do, um, you know, why don't you set up a caucus meeting with your colleagues that, you know, may be interested in this and can and may want to sit down and get a briefing on it or maybe they can explain why it's important to do, take this action with their own caucus or colleagues. There's also, you can write to the minister directly. So a lot of members of parliament, they just send a letter saying, on behalf of my constituents that live on one apple tree drive, they care about this issue and I wish to, to show my support to them and I encourage you to read their email here. So different ways, they can be small, they can be big, but all impactful and all equally important. And I don't want to um, downplay anything that anyone does because really all of it sometimes is just a, a snowball effect that starts off as one conversation or one seed or one word that really impacts somebody and then next thing you know they're you know they're grabbing lunch and someone mentions it and then it becomes a whole other thing and I've seen that happen quite a few times that result so I think never underestimating yourself and believing in what you're saying and talking about it is so key and trusting yourself and knowing that you know your stuff I think that's a big thing too like I said when MPs do tend to question or even just think well I think I heard something differently at committee or I think I spoke with someone else who was interested in this and they might've said something else. It's okay that they may have misinformation and that you may actually indeed know what you're talking about and that's good. So just to stay true to what you know and, and believe in what you've studied hard for and obviously prepared for for your meeting. And then of course, following up and, and being pleasant and being engaging. And I think that's really just trying to, try, trying to do the good work that we're all trying to do. So I think that's really important. Thank you so much. Uh, maybe I'll give it a chance to people who are, who are on the phone, if there's anyone who wants to ask a question or the chat box.
All right. I think I think that's our, our cue to uh, wrap this up. Um, so I really want to thank uh, both uh, yourselves, Neha and Emma, and of course everyone else uh, who joined us uh, tonight or this afternoon, depending on where you are. Um, I'm hoping that uh, this was useful uh, in furthering and expanding even more your skills when it comes to Member of Parliament engagement. Um, we're certainly looking forward to seeing many of you on Twitter. Keep, uh, keep at it, doing some amazing work, not only online, but also in person or via emails. Um, so uh, as promised, the email is here. So grassroots at results hyphen resultat.ca if you have any questions. But as I've mentioned at the beginning, uh, we will be uh, sharing the recording of this webinar. Uh, along with uh, a link to our tools uh, page when it comes to Member of Parliament engagement. So certainly uh, keep an eye open for that. And uh, we look forward to further webinars and discussions with all of you. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thanks, Melissa. Thank you. Thanks everyone, it was very good. Thanks for joining.